Hi there everyone. So in the second video, this week looking at some common applications of the skills you've been learning over the last couple of months, we are going to look at how to use the if-else function combined with the mutate function, and we're going to look at factors in a little bit more detail as well. So the first thing we're going to do is look at the if-else function. The if-else function returns one of two options based on the result of a logical test. So we take our if-else function and the first argument that it takes is a condition that results in a yes or a no answer, or in our speak, a true or a false. And the second argument to the if-else function is what we're going to return if the first condition returns true. And the third argument to the if-else function is what to return if the condition returns a false. So let's look at a really simple example here. I'm going to start off by creating a data frame with one column. It has a column called variable and it contains a mix of characters, variables that contain types of spoon and people's names. And so we're going to use the if-else function to answer the very important question of whether our variable is a spoon or if it's a person. So we're going to start off with our data frame here. We're then going to just assign that into a new data frame called df underscore type. And then to use our mutate and if else, we're just going to pipe that into the data frame function. You can see here in mutate, we create a new variable called type, followed by the if else function. And remember our first argument to the if else function is our condition. And in this case, we're going to use the grapple function to return a true, true or a false based on whether our variable, so in this case our column name, matches with this value here. In this case, it's going to try and match on the character's spoon, and it has this little dot star in front of the spoon, which means it can match anything in front of spoon as long as it is preceded by spoon. Our second argument is what to return if the condition is true, which in our case is going to be spoon, and if this match is false, we're going to return the value person. So, let's just run that in our R console, see how it all works. So the first thing I'm doing here is just creating our data frame. You can see a data frame object appears up in our environment here on the top right. Ten observations of one variable. I can click on that just to make sure that's all appearing correctly in that object. You can see one column, name variable, with our spoons and names in it. Next, let's apply our if else function. So you can see here we're creating a new object called df type. That's now appeared up in an environment on the top right. We're taking the df object, we're mutating it creating a new variable called type and applying our if else function to it. Let's open up our df underscore type object and you can see we've now created a second column that says spoon or person and you can see the variables that have the word spoon in it are now correspond to a type called spoon and the ones that don't now have a type are called person. You might want to pause the video now and just try running this code in your own console. Next, let's have a look at how we can combine factors using the factor function. So here we're just going to create a new object called df underscore factor. We're going to pipe into that a new variable called type underscore fct. And we're just going to use that factor function to convert 
our column type into a new column type underscore FCT, which is a factor. And you can see down here in the resulting data frame, we have our original variable column, we have the type column we just created, and we now have a new column called type underscore FCT. And the only difference here you can see originally we had the type was a character variable, and now type underscore FCT is a factor variable. If we go over to our, our studio session, we can run that code. We run that, see that we now have a third object here, df underscore factor in our environment, that now has this third column. You can see if we want to print out the contents of that new row, we can just type in the column name, dollar sign, name of that column, hit our return button, and you can see it returns something a little bit different than if we just printed out the type column. It now has all the values in that column, but it also prints out that they're now part of a factor with two levels, person or spoon. We print out the type column, you see it just prints out everything in that column, just those characters, but it's not telling us that they have levels because it is not a factor. Let's look at one more useful thing here, and this is how to combine factors together. So in this example, we have a factor with six levels, and it contains six different foods stove types, an LPG stove, gasifier stove, fan rocket stove, a rocket elbow stove, a three stone fire, and also a control. We're going to combine four of these levels together, and whenever we want to do this factor manipulation, we're going to be using the forecast library from the tidyverse. This will pretty much do anything you want in terms of manipulating factors. To Reduced our factors to two levels, we're going to use the factor collapse function. This takes a variable, in our case we're going to call it x, and it's going to combine those four levels, all the four stoves, which are wood stoves, into one new variable called wood. You can see if we now run this, what we're left with is three different variables now, control, LPG are left as they were, and we combined all these four names into the wood name, and now we have a factor with three different levels. We can run that code in our console. First of all, let's create our factor. This is going to be called x. We can use the factor function to create a factor. And we're just going to concatenate the names of all our factors in there. See if we type x here in our console, it prints out similar to what we had with our previous data frame. It's going to list all the different variables in there and also all the different levels. We're now going to load the forecast package. And that will allow us to use the factor collapse function. combine these four levels, gasifier, fan rocket, rocket elbow, and three stone into a single level called wood. We now have a factor with three levels, control, wood, LPG.